Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to investigate a key concept in microeconomics and relevant mathematical applications that can be used to derive the market equilibrium for given linear supply and demand functions, and most importantly, what impact various government policies, such as taxes or subsidies, can have on such markets in terms of the deadweight loss and the distribution of taxes between consumers and producers, in terms of the consumer surplus and producer surplus. And we'll use relevant graphs, relevant formulas, and derive the closed form solutions for things like the deadweight loss. So let's roll. Let's first define our market using the simple graphical representation in the QP plane. So we'd have our Q axis as the X axis and our P axis as the vertical axis, as a Y axis, and we would have our usual supply and demand functions. Downward sloping demand over here that can be defined as a linear function P equals A minus B times quantity demanded with A and B both positive and the supply function that will be upward sloping over here and that can be described as C plus D times quantity supplied. And here, A and C are quite neatly defined as intercepts of these particular lines. So here we would have A, and here we would have C. And we can already see that A should be greater than C for any productive market equilibrium with positive Q to be there. So we assume A is greater than C. And we just assume that B and D are positive, as demand curves are generally downward sloping and supply curves are generally upward sloping. And that's pretty much all assumptions that we make, and we can then proceed to solve our market equilibrium and look at various taxes and subsidy scenarios generally. So here, where the demand and supply curves intersect, we would have our market equilibrium here in this point. And we can see the equilibrium quantity, quantity equilibrium, and the equilibrium price over here. So how to actually find numerically or generally using our A, B, C and D parameters the market equilibrium in terms of quantity and price? Well, to do that, we have to solve a system of linear equations for the demand curve and the supply curve. The demand need to be equal to supply, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So first, let's simply consider that A minus B times Q equilibrium needs to be equal to C plus d times q equilibrium. And here we can transpose this equation and put c on the left hand side with a negative sign or subtract c from both sides and then add b times q equilibrium to both sides. So here we would have b plus d times the equilibrium quantity as we can uh, put uh, qe outside of the parentheses. And now we simply need to divide both sides of the equation by B plus D. As we can do that, B and D are positive, so B plus D is positive, it's not equal to zero. So quite comfortably, we extract the equilibrium quantity as A minus C over B plus D. So now we have to find the equilibrium price. And that can be achieved in two different ways that are equivalent. We can either put the equilibrium quantity we have just derived into the demand function or into the supply function, and both should give us exactly the same answers. Let's plug our equilibrium quantity into the demand function over here and get that the equilibrium price is equal to A minus B times the equilibrium quantity. And here we express our equilibrium quantity in terms of the constants that describe the market, so B times A minus C over B plus D. Now we have to uh, express everything as a single fraction, so we need to make A a fraction with a denominator of B plus D, and we can quite easily do that. A 
times b plus d minus b times a minus c over b plus d. And now we can simply open up the parentheses and get ab plus ad minus ab plus, as minus times minus equals plus, plus bc. And here we can see that ab and minus ab go away, they cancel each other out, and we have over b plus d still. So our equilibrium price is actually ad plus bc over b plus d. And actually, these two simple formulae we have just derived tell us quite a lot about the nature of the market. For example, if A increases, so the uh, maximum price uh, consumers are theoretically willing to pay for the good, and we can actually look at those points over here as the distribution of maximum reserve prices consumers want to pay for the good that's being traded on this market. For example, uh, some consumers want to pay as high as A, but there are very few such consumers, and then there are being like distributed in the decreasing order of their maximum reserve price, constituting this nice uh, linear demand curve. That uh, particular insight would be very important for us when we try to derive the consumer surplus. And the same goes for the producers, with uh, C being the lowest uh, minimum reserve price producers are willing to accept to sell their good that they're producing, and there are very few of those that want to uh, only charge C, and uh, as the distribution goes in the ascending order, here the curve emerges. So basically this is the distribution of maximum reserve prices or reserve values for the customers, the consumers, that shapes the demand curve, and the distribution of minimum reserve prices or reserve values for the producers that they are willing to accept to sell their good, and they are ranked in the ascending order, generating the supply curve. In our case, they are linear. Uh, at other cases, they might not be linear, but we stick with the simplest case possible to generate our further insights. So basically, if we look at our QE and PE expressed in terms of AC, B, and D, we can see that the higher the maximum reserve price is, the higher the quantity would be, and the higher the price would be. So if consumers are valuing the good more, then they would be buying more of this good, and the producers would be producing more of this good, and also they would be willing to pay a higher price for that, on average. Um, on the other hand, if the uh, minimum reserve price of the producer C increases, the quantity produced, and quantity supplied, and quantity demanded, quantity consumed, does uh, reduce, simply because we have got this particular numerator reducing all other things held equal, and the price increases. So basically this good becomes more valuable and more scarce, simply because the producers are less willing to part the ways with, with the good that they are holding or producing. And in terms of the uh, elasticities of our supply and demand, the more elastic supply and demand are, so the uh, closer to zero, the lower B and D are, the more of the good gets produced and consumed, given the fact that the market is wider, the market is more liquid, there is more uh, to be produced and more to be consumed. And that is a nice insight, nice correspondence between the simple parameters we've got here and the equilibrium quantities we can derive. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.